Thank you, Jane. I pro we should probably scared you off with all those acronyms and stuff like that. Who's drinking through the fire hose today? Is your brain full? Do we, do we need some AI to help? Yeah. Um, for those of you who are 40S shareholders, um, there's a few in the room, you're probably not going to learn anything today because I've got 10 minutes and we've got to cover quite a lot. Um, we also, um, we have to sort of, there's a sort of progress to explaining uh, our, our, what we do and um, trying to cover all that isn't very intelligent. It might come across as artificial, maybe superficial. Well, I'm sorry, I am a dad, so I need to make dad jokes sometimes. Uh, but, you know, you will perhaps, I hope, get some insights into what this AI thing is really about and not just the, the hype that companies mention to get a bit of attention. We've been working on this for many years, um, so I'm, I'm going to try and cover some of this. But what I do encourage you, let me ask, who's, um, who's in the room from the industry, uh, sort of brokers, uh, fund managers, advisors, uh, capital markets? Roughly half, and all the dudes in suits at the back. And, um, and who's a private investor? I guess the rest of us are private investors? Okay. So what I expect to achieve at this meeting is not to tell you to go out and buy a stock. This is something quite complicated. So it's about you thinking, I'm going to research this a little bit more. And, and also, if you want to have us in, if you're a, a, you know, an advisor, uh, to encourage us to, to get in touch with me and have us in to come and talk to you. Our, um, I'm also a founding director of LSITE. You just heard from Yaiv in Israel. So you can ask me any questions about LSITE today when we're, mum when we're mingling as well. Um, so to start off, um, it's, it's, I want to talk about artificial intelligence because it's an, any kind of compute intensive application is what we are set up to help with. We make memory. We don't make it yet, that's what we're developing. A type of memory which will enable and unblock the bottlenecks that are coming up as we speak. Now, Jensen Huang from NVIDIA, it's NVIDIA folks, Aussies, it's not NVIDIA. Um, NVIDIA, Jensen Huang says that this is the next industrial revolution, no less. And the, um, you know, everyone, Mark Andreessen, who invented the first browser, as you, some of you know, said that AI needs a new computer. And everyone who purchases NVIDIA chips, like Google, Microsoft, Meta, they're all embarking on chip programs of their own. All right? Now, the chips, we know chips, we talk about chips as a, as a slang term, but you've heard the term CPU, right? The brain on a computer. NVIDIA makes GPUs, graphical processing units, which run billions of transactions in parallel. And the bottleneck is still the memory. So we can keep buying chips and keep buying them and throw them at the problem, but most of the capacity is unused and chewing up lots of power. So this is what we're working on. Uh, for those of you that have heard this term and used this term, it's a hype cycle. That's the Gartner hype cycle, by the way. Um, and speaking of hype, um, this is what's driving, that's not what's driving this. But can you spot the errors, anybody, on this chart? NVIDIA is now over $2 trillion in market cap. They went up in their last announcement, in their last earnings report, by the combined value of, of some of their customers. Big companies in their own right. Um, but what's the hype about? Can I ask you, what's the real hype, recent hype about AI? It's really generative AI, right? AI is not new. Machine learning is not new. We've been doing this for a long time. But because generative AI came out, chat GT, G, G, GPT we all know about, Google DeepMind, because this came out, now we're, everyone's talking about it. But, but there's real AI, like you've heard about from Brian and Blink Lab, people that are using AI as part of their core stack. And it's all coming to a head because you've heard of Moore's law. Who's heard of Moore's law? The, the amount of transistors on a semiconductor on a chip will double every you know, year and every two years or whatever it is. And it keep, keeps getting faster and faster and faster with no increase in price. That's coming to an end. It's hitting a wall. Now, it's not so much that it's coming to an end, but new paradigms are needed. But I'll say again. One of the big ways to unblock this is with memory. And how's that? It's like you and me. When we, as we think, we use memory as we think. We don't think of memory as being a separate thing to our thinking. We use in-compute memory. 
Now, computer systems haven't been designed like that. Computer systems are still using the same architecture as 45 years ago. So a complete paradigm shift is needed. That's the hard thing about 4DS because we're not selling into a segment that exists. We are talking to the designers and architects of the next generation, the companies that are spending billions of dollars on buying NVIDIA chips because that's their revenue. So just some of the terms here. Uh, so AI means a lot. There's a lot, a long, lot of history, uh, decades of development. Generative AI is what's causing the recent hype. But all these things are based on these neural networks. And we'll discuss a little bit about the computing needs of that. So why we, why we say it's the right memory for the right time, it's the right memory to do the sort of tasks that I'm referring to, but the timing is right because of what we're seeing in the marketplace, because of AI. Um, again, I can't cover all this in detail, but essentially the introduction of a new non-volatile memory, that's memory that doesn't have to be refreshed all the time. The introduction of that memory with high speed would actually open up many possibilities for system designers. It's not that it can and it will, it must. It has to happen. Someone has to crack this sector of memory, right? And no one has done it yet. Now, Intel had a, had a, had a product called Optane, or 3D Xpoint, as some of you might know. And it, like NVIDIA, comes, it really played in the gaming market where NVIDIA comes from. Uh, but Intel has kind of backed off that. It's very expensive. It's become very niche. But it proves that that concept really works. Um, with 4DS, I'll explain to you our journey. And some terminology, please, if I may. Uh, you've heard of memory, 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 right? In computers, you have memory. There's different types of memory. So far over there on the, far over there on the right is NAND, the technical word for flash. Flash memory, like, like this, right? You know, these thumb drives? And now your hard disk on your laptop isn't a hard drive anymore, it's flash, right? So that's, um, that's flash. And then at the other end of the spectrum, right near the chip, the processor is something called cache. And now we use SRAM, and that stores a bit of memory in compute while it's thinking, not good enough. And it's running out of steam, it's too big and clunky, that's not going to be solution. In the middle here, you've got DRAM. That's what we mostly call memory. When you say memory without qualifying it, you mean DRAM. That's what you mean. Right? DRAM is those chips that you put in the computer, and the computer stores, the CPU stores information there temporarily. Trouble is, it's really expensive. It's got to keep getting refreshed. It is not suitable as a functional in-compute memory for AI. So someone has to come up with that solution. And that's where we sit in the middle. And a type of memory we use, I don't want to go into it too much here, it's called RERAM, resistive RAM. I'll just explain that concept briefly. There's other RERAMs on the market. They work differently to us. We should almost be in another category, but we all are called RERAM. Um, so that's what I'm going to talk about now. And then, so the, when I mentioned two different types of RERAM, essentially memory works like this. You've got Millions and billions of little bits, single cells of a material. They're all joined up together, right? And you read them and you apply a current and it either goes on or off, one or zero. That's it, one or zero. That's digital, isn't it? One and zero. That's how memory works. You've got to turn it on and turn it off. So we, what we do is we make current flow and we make current stop. And, and, and basically, um, what happens is you put the current in and it becomes resistive. Resistive, meaning the current doesn't work. It's zero. And then you do something else and it becomes conductive. And that's a one, right? So backing up a little bit. So other types of RERAM work a little bit differently. Oh, my back button doesn't work. Um, the other types of RERAM, no, don't, maybe you can back it up a little bit. One more, one more back. One more back. That's it. Other types of RERAM they form this little microfilament uh, through the cell, which then lets the current go through. And when you turn that on and off and on and off and on and off, you have problems with endurance. So there's a term, ladies and gentlemen, endurance. How many times can the memory switch on and off, on and off, on and off, on and off, right? So DRAM has lots of endurance. Flash in your computer doesn't, doesn't need to, right? What it needs is retention. It needs to keep the memory for months, years, days, whatever it is, right? 
So that's, all memory is different and it has different uses. So here's our advantages. It's persistent, that means it stores memory. It stores it for more than, you know, 35 nanoseconds. It's very fast, like DRAM. You can tune that retention to depending on what the application is. It's very low energy. And when we say scalable to any process node, forget about the jargon there, guys, but it means we can scale down and we use standard uh, industry transistors platforms to measure that memory. And so that's that thing that we keep talking about. And if you think about the computing architecture that currently drives AI, they're moving to these things called neural nets. And there was a working paper in the 1950s that actually said that's the way that computers should be developed. But we really didn't have the technology. And we, pursu we pursued the pathway that we have now today. But it, now we're going back to building systems the way our human brain works. Trouble is we don't have memory that the memory is separate to the processor. So it's evolving, but what we, our vision is that you have memory that's right there and it's used in compute as you're thinking, just like you and I do, right? But no one, no one has that commercial memory. So how are we gonna make that commercial? Um, uh, power, that's another issue, but I won't touch on it too much now, but that's a massive issue. Blackstone have said, that, you know, invested very heavily in data centers because of AI. You know what they've pointed out? that one of the biggest investments you can make if you get the right one is in the grid because the power usage is incredible. So a need for a new memory solution exists and this quote is from IEEE. Everyone knows it, uh, we're working on it. So that's why we think we're the right memory for the right time. Um, so what are we doing commercially? So the corporate summary is up there. You can see the, the way our share price tracks and interestingly enough, this is the cycle we were in last year, right? So during the year, what we do is we take us, do we take our recipe we send it to IMEC in Belgium, which is our partner, and they, they do research for company, research R&D fabrication for companies like Intel, all the big players. They wouldn't deal with us if they didn't think we had something. And we pay them quite a lot of money, though, to create the cells into an array and onto a memory platform. And then they send it back to us, and we test it. And if it goes well, this is what happens, right? If it doesn't go well, and that's happened, long-suffering shareholders who know our journey. We have a learning cycle, we incorporate that information, and we go again. That's life, that's what we do. And uh, we're in that cycle now, so you know, I would say you, if you want to get involved in this and want to look into it, if you're in the industry, invite us in and we can talk about it or introduce us to your analyst. If you're a private investor, I would first do my research and learn about this and look at our history and, and learn about AI and some of the trends driving the industry. So uh, I also mentioned that I am uh, um, uh, on the board of LSITE. This is our board uh, and management of, of, of 4DS. Um, the people here are all based in Silicon Valley, as is all our R&D. Um, these gentlemen here, Ting has had a lot of success uh, in his past life commercialising memories. And um, Peter, who've just joined, and this is significant, We've hired him as a Silicon Valley industry veteran because he's getting out there and talking to the industry. We are at that phase. It's still a very risky investment, as you know, as I've explained to you, but we're at that stage where we're up towards the pointy end. Now we're finding applications for this technology and he's out there um, making connections. So thank you for your time. I'm sorry to bombard you with so many heavy, so much heavy stuff. And please ask me questions in the break.